Hey traders, Parker again with another indicator. Today I'll be introducing you to the inertia indicator. And basically what you're going to be getting with this indicator is actually uh, three indicators built into one. If you look right here, this is just the uh, move averages. Uh, this is be the 8 and that be the 21. The dots you're seeing are the parabolic uh, czars. And when it's positive, it'll turn to cyan. When it's negative, it'll turn to that magenta color. And the blue is just a Heikinashi. The line turned to uh, blue if it's Heikinashi, uh, if it's in a positive. And if it's in a negative, it'll be gray, as you're seeing right here. And the inertia indicator is actually this uh, cyan cloud and this uh, pink cloud. And the stock is moving up, this pink cloud would stop and just go away and as you can see right here it stopped right i mean it it came back into view on the five minute right here and then it also offered this support when the stock is not going down it creates this um area of support for the stock to possibly fall down to and possibly get a bounce and it worked just great on this five minute and i have my crosshair synchronized so you can actually see it on the 15 minute as well so you're going to be looking for your signals off the higher time frame uh, more likely than the lower time frame but you can also see that it works just fine on both time frames this is the 9 and 21 and you got your signal back here well you got your signal for the inertia actually back here and this as you can see it's in that same area over here and you got it right here as well but you always want to rely more so on the uh, higher time frame to uh, for evidence that you're seeing the same uh, same thing so you got your 920 cross 921 cross and then you got your parabolic czar as well and you got your hike and notch, which makes the lines blue and you got your gray when things started to turn on the stock and this is the spy a lot of people ask me does my indicators work on the spy they work just fine on all the stocks except for if it has volume included it won't work on a stock that doesn't have volume in it like the vix or uh, some other indicator i mean some other stock that doesn't have a have a, a volume included but this one doesn't have anything to do with the volume so um it'll work just fine on all the different stocks and you'll see right there is it gives you an area to is it climbs it gives you an area for the stock to actually pull back to and possibly get a bounce from as you can see it's the same situation here right here is right here on the 15 minute as you can see it's battling with this area right here even though the stock the harder the stock is the indicator and this line is based off of hcl3 and it's basically taking the higher the price the lower the price and the closing price and dividing it by three and giving you this average and that's what these lines are based off of and this is what this is based off of as well it's based off of the uh, the lowest the lowest uh hcl3 and this is based off the highest cl3 and the minimum and max of the candle i combine that to give you what i call the inertia indicator and it'll give you a, a pretty good signal if the stock is trending up or trending down. As you can see, if it's trending up, you'll get this blue line, a uh, blue cloud, which is inertia going up, and you the pink line will stop versus uh, telling you that the inertia is going down. And it you'll wait for a break of this area or possibly a bullish signal from the actual blue line on the side uh, parabolic czar to enter into the trade. A lot of times I wait for this area to be broken above. So I'll probably set my entry in somewhere around here, a break above this area and a stop loss, possibly um, a break of the, the 20, 21. Or with anything you can wait for a pullback and this is an excellent pullback especially with these long lower uh wicks down here show you that the buyers is really stepping in and uh taking charge of that stock so we'll switch it to the vix which uh someone uh pointed out that uh anything like i said doesn't deal with volume and this is the vix indicator or the fear indicator you can play it like this as well when uh, you get a pink cloud on the VIX on one of the time frames. It's actually kind of sort of an entry point uh, for some of the other stocks. So.
so we're gonna look at Tesla. Well, let's look at IPP. This is one of the stocks that ran Friday. And as you can see, this is the lower time period frame. Let me zoom in over here. So my crosshairs will match up with everything. So this is the lower time frame, the five minute, right? This is the five minute and this is the 15 minute. And you want to look right here. You got that. Uh, you got your uh, you got a breach of the lower inertia line, inertia line or the support line. And then you got the stock pushing back up. And as you look over here on your 15 minute, that's the same breach right here. That same little area. But everything right here is just positive. And even when you get over to this negative area right here with the pair of Lazar turning negative to that pink uh, uh, magenta color. You still got it riding on those two move averages right there. And you got your signal right here with that pink cloud right there come into play saying that the stock is no longer moving up but actually moving down and it came to the support area bounced up and it continued up you got more signals because you're on a lower uh time frame but this higher time frame would have probably kept you in longer especially because it hasn't breached the um the 21 21 um move average and it hasn't been a cross either of the of the eight and a twenty one. Even though you got crosses over here, and if you look right here, that's that same area right here. That's right here. So let me just highlight this area with this bubble. And there you go. You got um, three of these candles will make one candle over here, and you got this area right here where it, the stock turned around once it entered into this uh, and this. Uh, lower the support line never stopped moving up it never went away so there's no breaches so that also would have kept me in a trade as well because the stock is not necessarily going down because when you have both of them show up at the same time it's showing that it's not the stock is not going up or going down so you want to wait for uh, a breach of the support area or the uh, a breach of the uh, resistance area with a pink cloud and it goes right on and the stock continued up so that's why i forgot to mention when you have both these together there's no inertia uh for going up or going down no momentum for going up or going down but when it breached it it got the inertia to go down on a five minute and you'll wait for a break over here on the 15 minute if you want to exit the trade and it works on fine on all the other time frames as well, depending on whatever time frame you're looking at. So we can go over to the 30 day. Well, not 30 day, but uh, I meant to go to the 5 day, 30 minute. And let's see what signal it gave us. It started actually over here at 430 that morning. As you look at on 30 minute, you see quite clearly that the stock just kept going up and got up in a major or uh, um, uptrend. And this is one of those oil stock oil plays. And if we want to go look at oil, we'll go look at slash CL. And you could have played this stock off of uh, the crude. So this same bounce is this bounce right here. No, 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 no. This is a 30 minute, so we're gonna move up. This bounces right here. And I also forgot to highlight those other areas. So, there we go. That's why I was kind of confused. But this area right here represents 30 minutes. Come on over. That area right there. And as you can see, you got your support line that appeared after this candle. So that would have been a good entry point. Or you could have waited for a breach above this, uh, the resistance of this pink cloud and for a move up higher. So let's go look at Tesla. Like I said, this is the five minute. Here's your uh, push up. You got this cue right here. But even though this pink cloud is still going down, it's saying that you want to wait for the inertia to go up to the top instead of going down to the bottom. But when you have both of them shown, just wait. 
And then once you get a breach, you can go ahead and enter into it once it breaches this area. And that area would have been a nice place to enter in. And you didn't get any of that over here, except for when you got down right here. And this also helped you um, weed out a lot of noise within the stock when the stock is just trading in, in the uh, consolidation or a whole bunch of noise. So we'll push it up to, we'll push it back all the way to this day. What is this? Three, two. So three, two. No, that's three, one. This is three, two. So we're in the same area. You got your signal back here. Even though you had your cloud right here, you got a good signal right here. And I probably would have entered in a, a break above the 21 and wrote that up to into the pink cloud and so but if you look over here you got that same you got two signals over here you got here and it rose right into that pink cloud of resistance and then you got another one right here it came down here it bounced it breached that uh support came back to this uh, created another support and breached above and sky and i was gonna say skyrocketed but it went ahead and shot up from there but this is the inertia indicator one of the other indicators i'm going to be giving away is this one right here and i'm going to put on both of them this would be um and this right here just represents the day the week and the month uh high low and close and open so let's put it on 10 day five minutes you're going to put on a, a higher time frame or a higher uh, more amount of days so we're going to put this on a 10 day 15 so you can see everything and what this does is just highlights the previous day's high the previous day close the previous um the previous day high low and close and the current open and this will be a free indicator and it'll be the previous day, the previous week, and the previous month. But you'll just have to make the adjustment on the indicator. So these dots represent the previous day's high. The previous day. Uh, let me zoom in on it so I can make sure I'm saying this correctly. So this week's, that's why I got confused. But this is the week's close as well. And I probably should have added it one by one instead of uh, adding it all together. But let's trail it over here. So these dots represents the previous day close would be purple. The previous day low would be green. And the previous day high would be red. You have this yellow dot says your uh, uh, pivot point where a stock po could possibly go up to and turn around. And it's basically created with the previous day high, low, and close divided by three. And that's how I got that pivot point. If you uh, haven't, uh, if you don't know much about that pivot point, check out some YouTube videos. And that's why I added it. These long lines right here will be the month's low. So that's to be the previous month's low. And where would the we'll probably have to go on more days. So I'm just gonna push this up to 30 days. And I'm going to go ahead and uh take some of this stuff off because I'm getting confused and I don't mean to confuse you either. So I'm going to get rid of the week and I'm just gonna leave the month. Okay. So this will be the previous month's low. This will be the previous month's months close would be that purple line and the white line is that current is the current months open and this would be your uh this would be your uh, pivot point for last month and last month's high will be up here at 12. And i probably should use a lower stock so i'll just go to four and it probably look um look a lot better or more understanding on this point and I get rid of the day, so we just have the lines just going across. And I will get rid of my Fibonacci line on four. The white line will always be the current open. So this is, even though it's last month's open, but it'll be the current open for the month. 
And even on my uh, the weak one as well, it'd be the current. And this one indicator can be set to uh, month, week, and day. So we're going looking at this is the monthly pivot point for uh, this month. This is last month's close. This is the current month's open. And this is last month's low of $15. And this is last month's high of $21.05. The reason why you want to pay attention to these levels is because the stock could possibly pivot or turn from these uh, areas. So this is the pivot point from last month's open, high, low, and close divided by three. And as you see, t uh, Ford stock actually rose above it, just like Ann Coolen said, it'd be like a rubber band. So it got above it, but it couldn't hold it. And it actually came back down to last month's close and this current month's open. And it buffered right there for a little bit, but it finally dropped below. So with Ford, well, I'm hoping not, but could possibly see $15.96 again. Even though it's showing this, um, it's the low for this month, it's because it's in uh, pre-market or after hours. And as you can see, if we're looking at the inertia indicator, you got it just rising up. You had it when they're both showing up. You want to pause and consider it because right now there's no moving up or down in this area. And then you had your breach and then it continued on. And why did um, why this area right here continue to rise to give you an area to put slick kind of like a stop loss. So you continued up. And the parabolic czar stayed, uh, stayed in the cyan as well. And this is the 15 minute. So this would be the best way to use the indicator as well. But like I said, if you want to change this, so we will auto zoom. So this would be, what is this? This would be January's low, January's close. And this would be the open for February. And where's January's high? January's high be right there. So you look for things to pivot from there. And like I said, you can change this to a week, month, or day, whatever you want to change it to. And this is a free indicator. So you have this week's open. Uh, this would be the week's uh, pivot point. This would be the. Um, last week's close and last week's high have you and this will be last week's low have you want to uh, use use this you're free to but for me i use it at different pivot points it looks like it worked very well for this month of uh february because it hit this uh after it's able to get a rise from january's close and february's open it came to the pivot point, pivot point at their support, and am I saying that No, this would be the second week of February, because I got on a week's time. So it took the pivot point at their support, rose up, and we can zoom in and see exactly what the indicator, inertia indicator shows as well. Show you this is your area of support pushed above, breached above that area of resistance and continued on up, created another area of resistance, came to the support, paused for a second and went down. But at least that's how I use the uh, use these indicators together. And like I said, this uh, the blue line, blue slash gray line is your as your eight moving period period move average according to HCL3. And the blue is the Heikinashi positive, uh, positive, and the gray is Heikinashi uh, negative. And the dots in, on the line are actually the parabolic czar. If you don't know what I mean by parabolic czar, it's right here. And normally, what you give it the parabolic czar, you get dots that are above or below. When the dots are below, it's a uh, positive. When the dots are above, it's negative. So that's to me just looking at that. That's not really helpful. So you can make changes to that and 
however you want to. But for me, it works better if it's locked in on the move average that I'm looking for. And if you don't know what Heikinashi is, so we'll just go to this style and we'll change to the Heikinashi uh, candles. And as you can see, you're getting those blues. And this is blue all the way through, and you can look at the Heikinashi. So Heikinashi is just used uh, for tr for for the trend. It's a trend following. So instead of having the candlesticks change like that, you can actually have it um, change with the move average. And as you can see, it turned gray from here, and it turned blue. It had a few good ones, but for the most part, you're looking at your inertia and you're looking at the move averages and you didn't get across with the move averages until here but that resistance level held strong throughout that until you got here but this would be the indicator and like i said the this one be free and the other one that i had on here the previous day previous uh pre-market labels there's labels in there I don't have them on right now, so let me get rid of the higher levels. So this blue line right here represents your pre-market high. These gray squares be your uh, pre-market low, and this would be your days open would be these white dots. The green dots would be your previous day uh, low, and these purple dots, they're lining exactly up with yesterday's close with these uh, purple dots. And your previous day high will be these red dots. But you can change to whatever you want to change it to. You can make it a line. You can do anything you want to do with it. And this is your uh, your pivot point. Now be act as your pivot point with uh, yesterday's high, low, and close divided by three to give you that yellow line. And this will be the end of this uh, video. I'll leave the link to the indicators. Uh, in the description i appreciate you guys watching taking the time out and watch this video i hope it uh helps you out with your trading i hope that uh everything that i'm trying to do is actually help other traders with different strategies so thanks thanks for watching if you haven't already liked and subscribed you uh if you like and subscribe uh, you get the notifications when i do new videos and give out uh, free indicators and some uh other in other information have a great day.